I wanted to do a walk around uh, video and first impressions. This is a two, 2021 uh, Cub Cadet wheeled string trimmer mower, uh, model WST100. This one has the 140cc engine, three year warranty uh, with sure start guarantee. Um, I only found like one other video on YouTube of this particular model and this model here is new it has a smaller engine uh, all the other reviews on YouTube were of ones that were um, the 159 cc engine which is bigger than this and now all the newer models are coming with this engine the best I understand now um, I got this from the uh, my local tractor supply store. Um, I'd actually though been researching these um, wheeled string trimmers, all the different brands they make, the DR and you know, all the other ones, uh, the, the Troy built, uh, Remington, uh, Craftsman, um, Yard Force, I mean, you name it, there, there's, gosh there's there's just not tons of them out there it seems like everybody makes one now so anyway i looked at all of them and uh, i kept coming back to this one because it seemed like the reviews were were good on it and everything more positive reviews on this one than um than some of the other ones i i was really going back and forth a lot between this one and the dr uh premier model uh, the DR Premier model, naturally, it had some more features than this. It had a, a blade brake clutch, with, which allowed you to engage and disengage the trimmer head independently of the engine, um, which was a nice feature and one of the reasons why I was considering it. What was hanging me up a little bit on it was is it seemed like people were having issues with the belt constantly, you know, having to adjust the belt tension. Um, or the belt, you know, wearing out or breaking, that kind of thing. It, it was, it was, seemed like all the reviews, just about it was constantly somebody saying something on that model about the, uh, the belt, you know, and very seldom did I see something about the belt in relation to these units here. Um, so that was one thing that kind of turned me a, b a bit away from the, uh, the DR Premier model. Um, I did like the fact that the DR had the Briggs motor on it. Um, you know, that was a, a big selling point for it, for me. But again, I, I went and looked at them in person and I saw the DR premiere and I saw this one sitting side by side and, and I, both of them were at the tractor supply store and um, just seeing this one in person you know, and, and seeing the other one, I just ended up for the price of this one versus the other one. And based on another big thing that sold me on this one was this handle design here. Uh, the way this handle is, is very ergonomic. You know, the arch shape of it here. And this uh, bail bar here is rubberized, coated into quail vibration and all. Um, <clears throat> So this one here, it just runs like a regular push mower where you pull that bail bar and you start it and the engine runs one speed. And um, and until you release that bail bar, the, the trimmer head doesn't stop. So it runs continuous. The belt is under constant tension on these models. These models here, uh, the Cub Cadet and Troy Built, Craftsman, Remington, all of those are made by MTD. Um, MTD is who makes this for Cub Cadet and they make it for the other ones as well. It's painted different colors with different labels on it, that kind of thing. But if you look at all of them now, like the Troy build and the um, various ones, they all have the same engine on it and the, the body and everything's the same. The handlebar may be slightly different. I think as of right now, this Cub Cadet is the only one that has this uh, arched handlebar here which is uh, i really like that it's very ergonomic it makes it it's at just the right height and you have different places to position your hands based on you know what you're doing um i've had a few push mowers in the past that have had this and i've always wished that all of them had had it uh, that i've had uh, 
Speaking about the handlebar, this does have three position adjustment through this wing nut on both sides and the carriage bolt. You can basically put this handlebar in three different positions based on how the height of the operator or whatever comfort level suits the operator the best. And if you completely remove both of these wing nuts on each side, the whole handlebar assembly will fold flat on top of the engine here and make it uh, convenient for transporting it like if you were to transport it in a trunk of a car or um, storing it somewhere, it, it makes it more compact for that. Um, I really like these wheels on here. I know that's, you know, not really, doesn't have anything to do with the performance of the machine, but the Cub Cadet gets these uh, multi-spoke wheels uh, that are kind of different than the wheels that they put on the other ones. All of them have the 14 inch wheel uh, diameter like this. Um, you know, the all the MTD ones that is. Um, so, uh, but these wheels are, you know, look better, I'd say all in all. And, um, another thing I noticed too, that the Cub Cadet gets different than some of the other ones is this debris screen here over the flywheel fan. Um, they all have some sort of a little guard there, but this one is more elaborate that it seems like that I'm noticing only the Cub Cadet ones are getting. Kind of keeps the larger debris from getting sucked inside that flywheel fan. So that's a nice feature um, that's unique to this model. Um, another thing too I liked better about this Cub Cadet versus the DR one um, is this guard here. So you see it's, it's got a lot of flexibility in it. Um, and if you look at it kind of from a front on standpoint, you see how this side, this side here is your trimming up side. And you can see how the deck, the frame of the machine is angled that way. It's purposely done that way so you can walk in a straight line, but you can get up closer to fences and foundations and things like that, other objects as you roll in a straight line and trim up. So I really like that feature a whole lot about it. Uh, talking about the chute or the uh, the guard, um, it's more elaborate than the uh, one that was on the DR trimmer mower. And it, and like I showed a second ago, the flexibility in this if you if you rub this up against something or you know it hits into something, it will bend rather than the other one that was on the DR was more rigid plastic, which I would tend to think if you hit it into something or it caught on something too hard, it could potentially crack and break. Um, so that was, the, the guard on this one was more elaborate. The MTD models have a more elaborate guard just in general. So that was another thing that sold me on this one that I liked better. I kept coming back to these, you know, um, for that reason alone. Um, two on the guard here. This is something also the DR did not have. And mind you, the DR, you got to pay a lot more money for the DR than this model. So you would think some of these things would be standard on the DR compared to, the, to this one. And... It's, it's actually not quite that way. Um, like for instance, this was something I didn't know this one had. You can see right here, um, there is a, uh, there's a blade here. And this is like what you find on a lot of weed eaters. My weed eater, handheld weed eater has one of those. That's so if the trimmer cord is cut too long or comes out too long, you know, like on a regular trimmer, that if it hits this, it will cut it to the appropriate length so that the machine is not thrown out of balance by having the cord too long or it bogging the motor down, that kind of thing like that. Um, this uh, head, trimmer head here, another thing that sold me on this machine versus the, the DR was is that this method of this hook and loop eyelet type system here um, for this head is easier to load, quicker to load. I mean, the DR wasn't super hard to load, um, but it was. It would have been a little bit more time consuming than this. 
uh, and this is all metal. So the mobile down here, the head, everything, all this is metal on the DR. It was a polyurethane plastic, which was seen very durable. I mean, you know, and all, but um, I think all in all, the metal will probably be a uh, be a bit more, you know, robust in the long run. Um, so as far as the height adjustment goes, this one is a little bit easier. I guess you could kind of argue one way or the other. One may be easier than the other um, if you were depending on how you look at it um, the dr you had to actually physically take the, the trim record out and move it up and down and preset slots on the plastic head this one here you literally just loosen these wing nuts here i don't know if i'll be able to do it with just one hand but anyway So you can see here how the the trimmer head it can be adjusted by once you loosen those two wing nuts there the silver wing nuts there you have your adjustment for the uh, trimmer cord height that would be your highest setting and you basically anywhere in between along that slot there you can set that and one thing you need to make sure it says in the book is is that these are fully tightened all the way so that um, when you start the mower up it, that you don't have any um, vibration issues or it being out of balance or anything like that so you need to have it tightened down where you want it to be at before you you start the machine up and the way I understand it too these are done in such a way that they cannot completely back off of these threads so I guess you supposedly are not supposed to be able to lose them ideally um, so that's a good thing <clears throat> moving along up underneath here it may be kind of hard to see um, you can kind of see the uh, spindle pulley up there and you can see the idler tension bracket there that keeps the tension on the belt and all around this uh, spindle pulley are belt guides that are really close to the belt. Um, that was another thing that I liked about it, that between that and the tensioner pulley and all, it seemed like it had really good, it, it was going to keep the belt in place a lot better. I looked at a lot of videos online of people who were changing the belt and stuff on the DR Premier. And you had two idler pulleys and all up under there that were part of that bit, uh, blade brake clutch thing, but it was not um, it was not the easiest uh, setup. But it also didn't look to be as sturdy as this to me. Um, which was another reason why um, about the DR, it, it made me wonder if something about that uh, idler tension system on it was the Achilles heel of that machine, the reason people had so much issues with the belt, you know, coming off and things such of that nature uh, with that one and the belt slipping. Um, you know, there were a lot of people talking about on that DR Premier, you know, about how the you know, they were constantly having to either replace the belt uh, or they would tension the belt and then they'd tension it as much as they could and the tension would come off, you know, it would not be enough and they'd have to go buy a new belt just to get the head, get the full power to the trimmer head here without it slipping in grass and stuff they were cutting. So, um, you know, a lot of that, again, it made me wonder was, you know, was it there, the tensioning system, the design of theirs, you know, it had something to do with that. I, it just made me wonder. Uh, you can kind of see back here, um, this plate here is uh, on the bottom of the uh, crankshaft pulley, which drives the belt. And that's pretty much all you can kind of see. 
easily. You can see the belt kind of going forward that way. Um, that big plate there on the bottom of that pulley kind of acts like a guard, um, keeping things away from that belt pulley, which is something the DR did not have. Um, Cause when you would look up underneath the DR, you would just see the pulley there on the crankshaft. Um, it was exposed and potentially, you know, a stick or something could probably get up in there and kind of derail the belt um, a lot easier than this here. Uh, I also believe that these notches here on this is also there to help you um, when you do put a new belt on this one to help get that belt around there by spinning this, it kind of, you hook it in here on one side and turn it and it kind of pulls that belt and stretches it around there where it needs to be so you can get it up on that pulley and all. But yeah. And it comes with this uh, 0 uh, .155 trimmer line, square trimmer line. It's already installed. Um, it's actually got pretty sharp edges on it. Um, and they give you, I think, approximately 10 other pre-cut pieces uh, that come with the owner's manual that uh, you can switch out when this wears out. So you're good to go for uh, your initial usage of the machine which is nice that they give you that and you can see there it tells you the type uh yeah 0.155 diameter yeah it tells you too about how to um how to hook the uh trimmer line into the head there which like i said is you know it's very simple a lot faster yeah, that's another reason why I bought one of these machines, too, um, is because I wanted to, I wanted to be, I wanted something that I could change the trimmer line out easier than on my regular handheld weed eater. I've got a, an Echo weed eater, and I really like it a lot. It's an older one that's got a bump feed head on it but it's constantly going through string almost too often. And then one of the bigger reasons of that is the bump feed head is, is almost just too sensitive. You know, if it, it barely touches the ground at all, it, it's constantly feeding out string when you don't want it to. And between that and the back pain associated with doing a lot of weed eating and there's at times, uh, I have to do a lot of weed eating around fences and stuff here on the farm and around the house and trees and just various other objects and stuff like that, that I had always wanted one of these wheeled string trim trimmer mowers. And um, I've been saving up for a while, you know, to be able to get one. And, uh, you know, finally was able to, to make a move on it. and. Um, I wanted to do this instead of buying another handheld weed weed eater. Um, I'm going to keep the one I have, you know, and use it for places that I absolutely can't get with this. But primarily, this is going to be my go-to for uh, trimming up beauty. Um, I'm going to try to do the majority of all my weed eating and um, heavier uh, weed cutting with this, obviously, than, and just use the handheld weed eater for other smaller, tighter tasks that this just won't, just can't get into, which I feel like the majority of my stuff, probably a good 95% of it, I'll be able to do all with this around here. So I'm really excited about that because I really don't care for weed eating much. And a lot of that has to do with the, you know, the back pain and stuff, you know, uh, associated with the regular weed eater handheld. And um, another thing about these is that in general, you stay a whole lot cleaner, you know, using them. I mean, from the reviews I've read, you just don't, you know, you don't get just pelted with, you know, head to toe with grass like you do with a handheld. So I'm looking forward to that um, improvement as well. Um, so I think that pretty much covers most of the stuff on this machine. It has um, has a paper element air, air filter on it. You just twist that off and you got that there. So it's real easy to 
get to to serve us. So that's nice. Um, and this plate here pops off if you need to access the um, spindle hub or the bolts that hold that guard on. And this is just a decorative protective cover. It snaps on like that. So yeah, this is a overhead valve engine, as you can see there. It's got the auto choke on it. And um, they send you the oil with it as well, which in a few minutes here, we're getting ready to put in and uh, fill it full of the oil, 10W30 that they provide. This is one thing too that's nice about this one. It does have an oil drain plug there. The Briggs motor was one of those that they claim about um, never change the oil type thing, which um, I did hear people say that they would just kind of tip the machine on its side and drain the oil out the dipstick or either they'd get one of those siphon pump things and they would change it, you know, periodically, even though Briggs claimed you didn't really need to do that. But I like this, you know, this is the old school way all the mowers I ever had always had a drain plug, you know, and stuff. You could drain the oil out. I, I really think that you need to be able to change the oil and, you know, just just provide a drain plug, you know, so that you can just do that. It's just more ideal and you're going probably, if you can do regular oil changes, it's going to make the machine last longer anyway. So, but, uh, yeah, let's, uh, I think we've pretty much covered um the majority of the stuff on it uh the next thing we'll do is uh, put the oil in it and we'll um run our pull start cord up here into this eyelet here it stays up here on the handlebar that's another thing that the dr didn't have the trim the, the uh, pull start cord always stayed down there on it which you know that's not a super big deal i mean but it is nice having it up here like on most push mowers so I like that feature. Um, one thing I wish this one did have that the DR had was the um, it, the DR had a throttle control lever here. You could speed the engine up or down. That would be nice to have on it as well. But um, I will say this though, that was something I saw in the reviews on those two that kind of you know bothered me a little bit is that people said that. They'd get it out of the box and this uh, throttle control lever, the way it was set up was when you would throttle it all the way back, it was, it was supposed to shut the motor down. But a lot of people were complaining that it wasn't shutting the motor down and they were having to go down and uh, pull the spark plug wire off to shut the engine down because that throttle lever was not doing it. And come to find out, I was watching one guy's video and he said something by he had to the same problem and he had to do some adjustment to the throttle linkage on his to get his to function the right way and shut the engine off so i don't know i i guess bottom line for me was is that for as much money as you were going to pay for the dr versus this it seemed like to me that you were going to have a whole lot more adjustments to make right out of the box you know the the belt slipping issues the belt wearing out, braking, uh, what seemed like to me prematurely and stuff like that. You know, and, and even though that DR Premier had the more powerful Briggs motor than this, in my mindset was, well, if the belt was slipping and you couldn't get the full amount of power that that Briggs engine was putting out to the head, then you were losing it. You know, if a belt's slipping, you're, you're not getting the full power to the ground. Uh, so even though this is 140 cc's versus the Briggs having a 163 cc engine, if this one at 140 cc's is putting all 140 cc power to the trimmer head and the Briggs has got 163 and is not getting all of its power to the trimmer head when it, on that DR model because of the belt slipping issues and things like that, then you're not you're really not gaining anything by having the bigger motor you know um but again that's not me you know i i'm a big briggs and stratton fan you know i've had a lot of equipment with briggs motors on there so i'm not knocking that and ultimately i would have liked this uh 
to have had the Briggs motor as well, but it is what it is, you know. Um, you know, time will tell as far as how this goes. I did buy an extended service and warranty plan on this. Um, so, uh, in addition to the three year one that it already comes with, so I, I, that that's, that's good. I got one extra year uh, protection on it. So I, I think it'll be all right. I'm gonna, you know, do my regular maintenance on it and take care of it, and I, I think it'll be good. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's get it, uh, get the oil in it, and um, get some gas in it, and then we'll move on from there to some uh, actual videos of it in action. So we put the machine on a level surface to remove this little tag. You know, they remind you you got to put oil in it before you use it. Take the dipstick out. This is the kind of, it's kind of a bag pouch thing that the oil comes in, 10W30, four cycle engine oil, API uh, meets or exceeds classification SJ. And this is supposed to be 20 ounces, which is what they tell you the appropriate amount is to fill this up and remove this cap here. Spout should make it easy to pour in without needing the funnel. I have no idea if this is supposed to be pushed all the way in or not. I have to read that. It's right at the high mark. Hard to see on there. I'm gonna take this loose here and feed your pull start cord through. A little wing nut on the back. See this little uh, rubber uh, boot here that they put over the gas tank opening. It says discard. You just pull that off like that. And uh, there's some cellophane wrapping here. A little bit of water in that. Hang on a second. dry that out. There's a little bit of rainwater in there. Well, it sat out in front of the store there. David picked it up. It had come a shower. Went back getting inside the gas tank. It's pretty dry now though. Right. So you got non-ethanol gas here. Also got treated with fuel stabilizer too.
impressed with it. It started on the first pull. Uh, and uh, you just did a little bit there along that edge. You can see that stuff's, that stuff's almost as, about shoulder high in some places here. Uh, it knocked some of it, a lot of it down right along the edge here. And I could keep going, but I'm not gonna do all that today. But you know, just along this edge, it's already cleaned up a lot. A lot of uh, briar and um, blackberry vines and uh, tall grass and other weeds and stuff like that that it's knocked back. And the cord, the trimmer line, uh, really doesn't show hardly uh, any signs of wear. I know I cut down a few things that were about the diameter of my finger in thickness and it really seemed to do all right. The key to it is, is, you know, to be able to mash down on the handles and go into it, you know, back and forth motion. Um, that way it keeps the engine from completely bogging down, you know, and keeps the speed on the trimmer head up. Cutting and all, but it, it really did good, I think. I mean, I'm really impressed with it so far. Got a couple of other areas and we'll try it out in too. And, uh, but that's a good first test. I mean, that, I doubt I'd ever be cutting anything much larger than that anyway. I mean, higher up anyway. But uh, with my regular weed eater, I couldn't, it didn't have enough power to do that right there. And uh, I would have been going through cord or you know, a lot more. Um, not having a brush blade on it, that is, you know. And even then with the brush blade, it, it would still have been underpowered for cutting that down so um and this you know like i said it's uh already you know it's uh it's a lot easier to work with versus having to tow the heavy string trimmer around mm -hmm. 